back in the in the late 1990s, uh, we did a lot of surveys throughout the the Waianae Mountains, looking at the the genetic diversity of, of the different snail species, and, and particularly one called Acatonella mustelina. So this is a snail which is on the endangered species list, and it's found on army training lands here at, at Schofield Barracks and also in Makua. So because it's on the endangered species list, then the army is required by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to uh, to manage the natural resources, including uh, this rare snail. Yeah, our, our snail uh, program, our snail conservation program, as part of the Waho Army Natural Resources Program, is just uh, one facet of our, uh, our effort to manage the endangered species that are uh, uh, threatened uh, in various parts of the Waianae and the Kola Mountains on, uh, on behalf of the, uh, uh, the U.S. Army. Uh, so the, uh, we do a number of uh, endangered plant conservation, uh, endangered uh, forest bird conservation, um, and even uh, some endangered uh, fly protection uh, efforts, as well as um, a number of other conservation efforts. But the snail program has really been a growing uh, portion of our conservation efforts. Uh, one, they're becoming increasingly endangered in various parts of the, uh, the Waianae and the Kola Mountains. And, uh, and this uh, snail uh, protection effort is really involves building these, these small enclosures, about an eighth of an acre in size, that really provide a much more medium to longer term um, solution to all the threats that they face in the wild. So we have our snail enclosure. This was built back in about 2012. And basically the Waianae range is broken up into about six different units for the snails based on their DNA. And so snails were, snails DNA samples were taken across and they've been able to signify different units where they don't want them to mix up. It's been a great benefit to work with the cab. Today and tomorrow we'll be able to lift about 20 sling loads off of Dragon X up to a remote site in the southern Waianae to facilitate the construction of a, a snail enclosure. And we'll be able to keep endangered snails inside of that enclosure. They'll be safe from the threats that are outside. Uh, those 20 sling loads average about 4,000 pounds each. Um, if we were to use a contract helicopter to do that, it would have taken us about about 115 loads and probably about four days of work. So. Uh, it's a great savings. Uh, I've heard from the, the rigging guys that it's an interesting opportunity because they're able to rig some gear that's a little bit different than what they're usually dealing with. Uh, the pilot gets some ex experience taking uh, the, the loads from here up into the mountains and delivering them into a remote site. Uh, yeah, so it's been a good opportunity for us, a great savings for us and environmental and a good training opportunity for the cab. And one thing about these snails, you know, how, well, how rare are they? So when you, when you look at the uh, the history of the islands, you know, these volcanic islands that are about three million years old. How did these snails get here? Right? There aren't that many different native animals. So how could snails get, you know, 2,000 miles? So it's thought that they wouldn't survive floating here, that they must have come on the bodies of birds. And when they, when they did, they were probably very small. And over millions of years, they evolved into other species and grew larger. But they, uh, there are, it's estimated there are about 750 different snail species in Hawaii, and that in order for those 750 to have evolved, there may only have been about 10 snails that came here by birds. So maybe one every 250,000 years got here and another one 250,000 years later. And that these snails were, you know, were able to, uh, back then, where there weren't rats and there weren't uh, predatory snails and Jackson's chameleons, you know, they, they had uh, no predators. So they, they uh, uh, diversified and, and spread across the different islands. So the snails are, are still declining uh, throughout the, ra the range in the, the Waianae and the Kola Mountains, except in these snail jails. And so what's been really great uh, for me to see is that the snail jails have been working. 
One of the uh, neat things about this uh, snail protection program is that 15 years ago, we were just talking about these snail jails. They had done some experimental work down in the South Pacific with building uh, much uh, smaller areas. Um, but it's really taken the funding from the different partners, the Fish and Wildlife Service and, the, and efforts of the state of Hawaii to really make, as well as the Army uh, funding efforts itself to make these, uh, these snail jails a reality. So it really provides, uh, 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 like I said, a, a medium to long-term protection effort. Yeah, what people don't realize is that the Army is a, is a major conservation uh, partner uh, in the state of Hawaii, um, uh, be, largely because of the, uh, the effort through the Oahu Army Natural Resources Program to, to fund the, the endangered plant, fly, a bird, and snail protection work. We have a lot of building materials, which is very, very heavy. And for us, we contract a Q500, and maximum weight is about 600 pounds for it to sling load and, and transport all of our building materials here to the site. But with the Blackhawk, it can carry, help us carry about 4,500 pounds. So it saves us a lot of money because the Army gets to train and then utilize their skills in helping us. And then we get to build and use less slings and save our money for other important stuff, such as the snails and the birds and the plants and stuff like that. And in t today in particular, uh, we're using uh, 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 this uh, really good training opportunity for the Army uh, to lift thousands and thousands of pounds of material that would otherwise be very expensive for us to lift uh, using a private helicopter. We do plan to build two more snail enclosures. And again, we'll have a lot of building materials. So hopefully we'll be able to collaborate again with the Army Blackhawks and help have them help us and have their training and slinging loads up to Ka'ala side. The, we've contracted the construction of the fence and it'll begin in April. Uh, once that begins, we expect it'll probably take about eight weeks to complete the construction. Um, and then once that's done, we're gonna start to do some uh, restoration within the fence area and make it a better habitat for the snails. Uh, and then probably in about another year after that, we'll be bringing endangered snails back into that area once we've kind of restored it and removed all of the predators. End goal is to, to try to prevent any further extinctions of these endangered species, these rare snails in Hawaii. days and they replanted uh, the whole lower slopes and then uh, <laughs> up at all more or and then if you're just looking at them more than white eyes um, just by the group. people yeah just I'm done uh, having fun eating snails I'm expecting that snail jails like I mentioned has well over a thousand so we really trying to do is is uh, we'll go yeah. you know maybe 30 years from now you may only see them within the within the snail jails 
We're trying at our Hapapa snail jail, like I said, there's you know, well over a thousand snails. If you go, if you wander there at night, they're really easy to see and a yeah. good portion of their lives. Um, so we'll definitely have to